Hello, hello everybody. Today I'm going to be drawing a one point perspective drawing that will include drones. I wanted to test this out to see if I can make it look three dimensional and make it look like it's got depth. I'm going to find out. But first, um, I'm going to draw the horizon line. That will be the ground. I already got my pencil, got my eraser ready. And during this drawing, you will sometimes see me using a ruler or freehanding the lines. And uh, you do you do whichever works best for you. I usually like to draw the ground a little bit higher because that way I can use up all the space on the paper. But in this case, the drones are the ones that are going to be taking up all the space at the top. So that's why the ground is going to be a little bit lower. The drones are going to be above. I'm going to draw the vanishing point. It's going to be more or less there in the middle. Tiny vanishing point. And from there, I think I'm going to draw lines that are going to be going to the corners of the paper. You don't have to do that right away. Um, you don't have to do it exactly going to the corners, but in this case, it's just for the main idea. It's, it's just for the main idea. It doesn't have to be, this is not a rule, but it's just so that my diagonal lines um, look very organized. That's about it. And this is going to make our drones look like some of them will be closer to the viewer and some of them will be further away from the viewer. These are going to be the rules to remember. From the vanishing point, all diagonal lines will flow out from, they will come out from there. All vertical lines will be parallel to all the other vertical lines, including the edge of the paper. And all horizontal lines will be parallel to the other horizontal lines, including the horizontal edges of the paper. I'm drawing a rectangle instead of an outright drone because rectangles are easier. I check that all my horizontals are parallel to each other. I think that I'm going to measure the line that I drew on the left side. It's a nice three centimeters long and I'm going to copy that distance and place it on the drone on the right side. From there, I can just go ahead and kind of guesstimate. Oh, you know what? I can just copy my horizontal line. It looks like it is pretty straight. Now, of course, um, I'm estimating a lot and I'm kind of freehanding a lot of stuff. I am trying to make sure that it is three centimeters long though. But if you had to be a, an architect or a civil engineer, then yes, of course, this would have to be very measured, well measured, highly specific. Now, from the vertices of the rectangle, all four of them will have to go back to your vanishing point. You will end up with four diagonal lines. And I'm going to draw all the way out there, surpassing the rectangle just because, and from here, I'm trying to plan my next move. I think here is, yeah, I'm going to connect the last vertice. I don't want to do it because the more lines you draw, the more complicated your drawing can get. And you can get more confused with more lines, but it, I had to draw that extra vertice over there. And then the vertical, make sure that you draw it over there, you kind of guess where you would want that rectangle to be. And then, you know what, uh, I think I'm going to freehand it. Remember, horizontals are parallel to horizontals, verticals are parallel to other, to other verticals. If you have a set of triangular rulers like this, 
make sure that they are well aligned and then one of them will have to stay still while the other one slides upward. This helps you a lot with uh, making sure that your horizontal lines are right where they should be and not that they're going at different angles. I'm going to check my work on the other side. I, I think it looks good. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite. Draw my diagonal lines going back to the vanishing point. I am drawing very lightly, even though you can still see it on the video, and I want you to be able to see it on the video, especially if you wear glasses like I do. But if you are drawing it yourself, I recommend that you draw it where it's barely visible because again all these lines can get very confusing the more you have there and um, if you make a mistake it would be best if you are able to erase if you're drawing dark and heavy then it will be harder for you to erase of course since I checked the horizontal lines on the right drone I can just copy them on the left side there we go and I can just copy that one vertical line. The difference should not be so so big. Now it looks like they're flying at us. They are charging towards us. And I'm going to draw two more drones in the back. That's going to be a little bit easier. Remember that I have to draw uh, start with my horizontal lines. That line starts at the first diagonal, skips the second and stops at the third diagonal line. I really like to place that triangular ruler at the bottom just to make sure that I can slide it up or down. And pardon the hair that's showing up over there. That's just my head. Sorry, sorry, I, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> but I am copying now that second that second diagonal line, that's where my line should start, and it ends with the third diagonal line. I'm counting, of course, from left to right. And then I slide it down just a little bit. And I draw that vertical from that vertice all the way until I cross that diagonal line. That's where I stop. So you just keep drawing the vertical line until you touch the next vertical line. There is a mathematical way of making sure that the distance, the depth, um, is that section, that tiny little section, is completely proportional to the drone behind it. But I'm not going to complicate this drawing with uh, formulas. We're not going to do that. We're just kind going to wing it and kind of eyeball it a little bit. It kind of looks good. It passes. <laughs> so I draw my vertical line. I close it with my horizontal lines. And now it looks like those four drones are really flying in our direction and they are the one that's closest to the ones that are closest to the vanishing point are furthest from us so it does look like it has um, a three-dimensional quality to it now according to the ruler it looks like those drones in the back the ones closest to the vanishing point are two centimeters long it's really nice uh, I'm not going to complain be too picky about it I'm just going to draw a two centimeter long line somewhere in the middle and that's going to be one drone that I'm going to place there in the back. Now right now I'm going to draw the vertical lines but technically you can skip that part because if you're using your ruler you can just slide it up, copy the horizontal line, and then you connect those vertical lines. There we go. So using a ruler can, can help you skip some of these parts and make it look even better. Now I am ready to connect the vertices to the vanishing point.
Remember, we're drawing this very lightly. Although I do want to show you that if you drew the diagonal going all the way up, that could give you another path. So you could have technically six drones if you wanted to, and potentially a larger one right there in the front, like leading the pack. But I think I'm just going to keep it keep it simple with this one hanging out in the back. Now I copy my horizontal line right there at the bottom. That one's way easier than the other four drones that I had to draw, or the other four rectangles. Now it's time to make it look a bit more like a, like a drone, like an actual drone. Now the helices or the propellers I'm going to, I, I didn't Google the parts of a drone and I might probably not do that when I'm editing this video either, but the propellers <laughs> look more like a, like an oval. So I'm going to draw them at the top of the rectangle, the rectangular prism over there. I'm going to draw them, try to keep them about the same size, but remember that the propellers in the back should be technically a little bit smaller than the ones in the front. And then uh, I would say don't stress so much about trying to make this look like an actual drone as long as you have the two, uh, the two, the four ovals and you are connecting it with in an X towards the center, that should give people the idea more or less that it looks like a drone. Finally, I went to Google Maps and I found an image of a stadium. I placed it where I placed a, the center where a vanishing point would be more or less. You could also do this with a street. There are many drawings that you can find online that use a one point perspective where it looks like there's a vanishing point right there in the center. But in this case, I thought a stadium would look just, it would look so much better so much cooler for this. But again, if you're using Google um, Maps for this, make sure that you are placing that vanishing point in the center of your drawing and it gives you a better picture that you can copy. And it will be easier for you because now you don't have to do a lot of geometrical, technical drawing. It's more organic. What I would recommend is that you watch this video. Of course, it's very late to tell you this, but watch this video without making a drawing so that you understand the main idea. And then like the second time you watch it, you do the drawing. It's kind of like the second time you read a book or you watch a movie and you understand things much better the second time. Hopefully you found this video not just entertaining, but also helpful in illustrating the ways that you could do a one point perspective drawing using drones. And uh, I'm further illustrating a couple of other formations that you could have with three drones in different uh, sections. In this case, they are flying uh, downwards. You could even illustrate, you could even color it just to show that movement and action. You could potentially have more drones flying, not just at the bottom, but potentially to the sides. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.